So you've got a mass here, and you have a pulley. Okay, and you got this business here. This pulley has this kind of stuff. It has a big radius and a small radius. This is R, and this is little r. Okay, that guy's little r. And this is M1, and this is M2. And the moment of inertia of the pulley is I. Right? Uh, I without a comma. Uh, find the acceleration of M1. I got a complaint today from people that don't understand what I'm writing on the board sometimes. Guys, just stop me and say, what the heck is that? What did you just write? Hey, if you don't get it, if it looks like, you know, anyhow. Yes? What? What, what do you want? <laughs> Joher, what the heck? What do you want, dude? <laughs> that, that is okay. Do you... Come down here. <laughs> All right. Do you, do you understand that this pulley is kind of compound pulley? It has a little radius and a little part on the inside. And I mean, if I look at the cross section of this thing, it looks like that. Do you do cross sections these days or no? Do you understand that concept? You people? Yeah. This looks like what cross section wise? Looks like this. All right. And that, so that's what your cross section looks like. That's your pulley, okay? You got that? And then the rope, the rope, so here, pay attention, yeah. Right? Uh, the rope is wound around like that and then right, like this, okay? You got that? Yeah? Do you have any more questions? All right, good. Uh, so, guys, on your own, now I know we have done some simple problems with pulleys and whatnot. This is a bit, of on, the, a bit on the heavier side, uh, but please do this problem. Um, um, you know, start with a free body. Think about the problem for a little bit. Let's assume, assume that things are such that um, the masses are such that this is going to go down this way. Right? So please... Write down the free body diagrams, equations of motion, and we'll go from there. Right? When you're done that one, move on to this problem. And I will not necessarily solve problems tonight, but I will show you how to do them. Okay? Because This one you have uh, a pulley or whatever, something of radius big R. And this one will have R1 and R2. And you have a mass hanging from here, M. Okay? This guy has I uh, small. And this is I uh, large, if you want, okay? All right? So this is a, an interesting problem in that this mass is going to pull this pulley, and this pulley is going to pull that pulley um, with the belt or rope around or whatever. It has to be a belt usually, right? Cool? When you're done that one, all right? When you uh, all, all we're going to do today, guys, to be able to get through the stuff, is write down proper equations of motion, okay, and give it over to you to solve them. All right, but we're going to establish the steps we need to solve a problem. Instead of spending 50 minutes on a given solution, we're going to walk through five solutions. Okay, but this means that you have to go home and get some work done. And the third example 
is going to be the following. You have this guy. A pendulum with radius 4R, or sorry, length 4R here. And this is R. This has M. And this has 2M. The angle it currently makes with the vertical when it's at rest, so this is V equals 0 initially. The angle is theta equals to, uh, I don't know, so this is theta, theta, right? So the question will be asking you, what is the velocity of a given point on here, whatever you want it to be? Let's say, what is the speed of point B? When this is swung to the vertical, okay? So what is the speed of point B here? All right? Oh, that says that, sorry, you're a bit far in the back, Veronica. I know. Shush. Okay. So this is M, and the mass of the bar is 2M. All right? Is that cool? Yeah. This is uh, round one. This is the run through forces and energy. And then we're going to jump into angular momentum, which is going to take the bulk of the session tonight. Because forces and energy are slightly easier. All right? So let me draw free body diagrams. I'm hoping to give you time to work, but we can't. We have a lot of stuff to run through. So. Uh, Free body diagrams say what? You have tension T here and M2G sine theta. And this we will call T2 because we know they're not the same. This is, you know. And this we'll call T1. And this is T1. And there is M1G. All right? So, let's look over here. We're assuming this is going to go that way. I'm going to write down formal solutions because I'm not going to bother with the final solution, so I have time. Some of the forces on M2 equal to M2A, and this is M2, right? So, I've got T vector plus M2G along x vector equal to m to a, and then I will pick that to be positive, so we have t minus m to g sine theta equal to m to a. Equation one. Over on this side, we have some of the forces in the y direction equal to m a y, and this is on m1. Therefore, I got what t vector plus m1 g vector equal to m1 a. I will pick well down to be positive. That's up to you. Then t minus t plus m1 g equals to m1 a, and I will forget that this is actually t1. All right? Yeah. It should be, yeah. Thank you, T2, indeed. All right? So, uh, all right, folks? So these are the equations for the masses. Some forces in one direction, some forces in the other direction, equal to MA. Now we go to the pulley, right? We say what? Some of the torques about the center of mass of the pulley equal to I CM alpha. On your own, please, now. I won't have you hash out all the solutions, but on your own, um, figure that out. So we say torque of T1 plus torque of T2 equals to I CM alpha. Okay. Now, alpha is this way. That's alpha, 
and we'll pick this to be positive. So whatever torque is trying to do this is positive. Whatever torque is trying to do that is negative. And this is my T2 here. The torques are what? Well, look at this. The torque is force times distance. So distance is, in this case, R, that way, right? Times T1, and that's spinning this way. So that is going to be little r, T1 minus capital R, T2 equal to I alpha. All right? That's equation three. How many unknowns do you have so far? Yeah? Well, so what do, we, what do we have so far? We have, well, well there is something happening in a second, guys, okay? I, um, let's say we blindly go and solve this and not pay attention to details. We're going to get into trouble. You'll see why. Right? Now, what is the trouble? Are these A's the same? What do we know about the pulley? The angular acceleration of the inside is the same as the angular acceleration of the outside. Okay? What that means is that A2, what is A2 equal to? We're going to have to call these A1 and A2, right? So mass 2 has A2, and what is A2 equal to? Alpha what? Capital R. And A1 is? Alpha little r, all right? So how many equations do we have so far? One, two, three, four, Five. How many unknowns? You have what? T1, T2, A1, A2, and alpha. Okay? Welcome to the real world of heavy pulleys. You have to, you can't just treat them as a light pulley. So you have five unknowns. Again, T1, T2, alpha, A1, and A2. But you have five equations. What is the procedure now? What have, we, what have we agreed to? You substitute everything into a, the torque equation, all right? But you have to play games between A1 and A2. They are related. How are they related? When you need to do, you know, when you want to, you know, when you plug everything into this equation, you still have to have A1 and A2, but they are related, right? So what's the procedure? Step by step, you're going to have to figure that out at home. We don't have time for that right now. You... You have five equations, five unknowns. How you solve them is up to you. You could put them into a computer or do linear algebra, right? Or do what I'm telling you now is take from each of these equations the variables and plug them into the torque equation. So that goes from here to there. You find T1 from here, you put it in there. You find T2 from here, you put it in there. And you find alpha from here, and you put it in there, right? Now, when you've done that, typically, you would end up with one equation, one unknown with A, but there are two A's, A1 and A2, right? How does that show up here? This is going to have A1 in it, it's going to have A2, but they are related, right? How are they related? A1 over A2 is what? Alpha R over Alpha R, so they're related that way, okay? Ratios of R, okay? So that's five equations, five unknowns, all right? Um, next step is I'd like you all, I will give you enough time, we are doing okay so far, I will give you enough time to set this one up, okay? This is the same rope running, or same belt, running around the pulley here and there, and this is a different rope running here. Um, I don't want you, the solution to this is a bit messy, okay? I don't necessarily want you to solve the problem as much as draw free body diagrams and write equations of motion. Annika, what do you want? Uh, sorry, back to just the first one there for equation five, does it matter if you sub in acceleration, or sorry, like the alpha from equation five or the other one that we solved for the math? Uh, you're going to have to play games because that alpha, you could do either or, you're right on this one, right? The question was, in alpha here, do I substitute this one or that one? It doesn't matter. Because you're going to end up with an equation that has, whether you, whether you put A1 in there or A2 in there, you're going to have an equation that has A1 and A2 in it, and you have to figure things out. Right? It's up to you. Yes? 
Uh, it doesn't matter. If you get A2, you can scale it to A1 as well. The question is asking for this one, that A. Right? So yeah, I should have a question mark here. Again, guys, on an exam, you'll have a full text of a problem asking you to do stuff. We just don't have the time to uh, put that down. A little bit of time, but you know, we need to move on. So guys, this pulley has, say, tension. It's the same rope, the same belt, but we know it's different tensions, right? So this is T1, T2, sorry. Uh, this is T1, T1, and T3. OK? The equations of motion are some of the torques. Let's say this thing spins this way, which it has to, right? We say on this pulley, some of the torques about the center of mass is equal to I C M alpha. And I've got, well, I mean, we're spinning that way, so we, I'm not going to go through the details of positive and negative. Uh, we'll say that T2R minus T1R is equal to I C M alpha. Okay? And this is I large. In a problem like this and that one, you really have to keep your symbols straight, your labels, subscripts and superscripts, because it does get messy. All right, guys, on this side, for this pulley, we say now sum of the torques is equal to I small alpha. It gets a bit tricky, right? What are the torques acting about this? We have, well, let's do this in vector form. We have torque of T1 plus torque of T2 plus torque of T3 equal to I small alpha. Now, we should be careful here because we don't know, and we know for a fact, that alpha large is not the same as alpha small. Okay, how do you know that? Because they have the same linear speed, right? Why do they have the same linear speed? V here of the belt is the same as V there. So we know they have the same V on the circumference, which means they don't have the same omega or alpha, right? Same A. Now, torque of T1 about this. What is positive? What is negative here? Whatever is going to do this is positive. So please, for the next line, write down what you think is positive in this case. Right? This is going to go this way. So assign signs to these vector torques. Whatever is trying to spin us this way is positive. So we have torque of T1 plus, see, T1 is going this way, T3 is going this way, and T2 is going opposite. So minus torque of T2 plus torque of T3 equals to I small alpha small. And what are these torques now? Let's flesh it out. We have torque of T1 is equal to what now? T1 times R2. T1 times R2 or R2 T1. These are the labels that I have here. This is R2. That's R1. Uh, minus the torque of tau 2 is, again, R2 T2. Uh, plus the torque of tau 3, which is R1 T3, equal to what? I small alpha small, okay? So, so far, we have one equation, two equations. We need more, right? Lots of unknowns today. So here, this is a bit of an indoctrination for you into what can, go and do the stuff at home. To, all right, guys? So here, we have T3 and Mg. So we say, with not much ado, it's going to fall down that sum of the forces in the y direction equal to ma. And I will pick down as positive. Then I'll get that mg minus t3 is equal to ma. All right? Guys, take stock of this. Take a minute and a half. Talk to each other. Find out what you need to do next. 
How many unknowns do you have? We're done with the equations of motion. How many unknowns do you have? How many equations of motion do you have? And what else do you need? Yes? Find the acceleration of this guy. So, folks, the question with a problem like that, you're always looking for force or acceleration. So, I didn't write it down, but what you want is, I, the question could ask for anything. It could ask you for A of the mass, it could ask for alpha of the pulley, whatever. Right? Uh, it doesn't, it's not a rule, right? It's not a rule, but if this guy has V, which that guy has V, right? V is equal to what? Omega R. The R's are different, therefore the V's will be, the, A, the, the omegas will be different. Right? All right, folks. So, so far we have a lot of unknowns, right? We have alpha small, okay? Put small on this. And people were asking me, are these torques about center of mass? Of course they are. Right? What else? Are these eyes about center of mass? Yes, of course they are. It's don't, don't get out of your whatever it is overwhelming you. And uh, guys, it has to make sense. Right? If we don't tell you what it is, assume it's center of mass, of course. Right? So now, uh, we have a lot of unknowns. So alpha small, alpha large, T1, T2, T3, and A. This is an interesting problem. Six unknowns. How many equations do you have? So far we have three equations. What are these unknowns? How, what are the other equations? Uh, we have what, guys? Alpha small. Okay. Yeah. So, hold on. So, alpha small... We need more equations. So look here, guys. If this guy, if we call this A, we're calling this A, right? Alpha small, or A is equal to alpha small times R1, okay? And if this is A2 here, then what do we have? Then we have that A2 is equal to alpha large, times r, but a2 is also equal to what? Alpha small times r2, okay? Now, hopefully you have enough equations to solve the problem, okay? You have six equations. What do you do? Substitute. You have to do multiple substitutions. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, that's the way the cookie crumbled today, all right? Uh, I don't have any good news for you that way. That's the way it's gonna be, all right? You have to go home and do a lot of work. There's no question about it. Okay. I actually do have some good news for you. Both problems in front of you are, now, while the first part of the course in kinematics, we did, uh, we did, uh, what? we gave you five equations, five unknowns, just as for fun. It was not necessary. We just made it like that. This is now... I mean, you could, you know, five equations, five unknowns were kind of contrived. You had to make up a really tough problem to use five equations, five unknowns. This is the state of affairs for rotation. You're going to have at least three equations, three unknowns, at least, going forward. Right? Maybe two, if you're unknown, so you're going to have two. Uh, you'll have three equations, three unknowns, going at that minimum. So five, six, seven, maybe, sometimes. So this one requires five equations, five unknowns. That one requires what? Six equations. Can you do it with one equation, one unknown? How can you, I've given you all three sections, I've given you tips as to how to do that. Yeah. Energy approach. The energy approach will save you a lot of hassle but you have to be careful. So what I'm proposing to do now is I will not do this one with energy. I'll leave it up to you, but I'll do that one with energy. Okay? Um, a word of caution, if you're using the energy approach to solve in one equation, one unknown approach, 
you make a mistake, you get zero part marks almost because, you know. Uh, they'll try to give you, my, in, if you want to go the safe way, you write down six equations, six unknowns, and you don't know how to solve them, you still got like 75% of the mark. Okay, if you get it this far, that's 60%, 50% at least. Okay, so what a caution, you really have to know what you're doing with the energy approach. So I'll try to do it so that I don't mess it up, okay? All right, so please spot me on mistakes. I will likely make mistakes. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. I'm not discouraging you from using it, but before the final exam, get some practice with the approach. Right? So now, how do you do energy? You allow this object to fall, distance h, and then you figure it out. Okay? So what do we say? We have mgh. It's going to go into what? 1 half mv squared plus 1 half i small omega small squared plus 1 half i large omega large squared. All right? Okay? I small and I large are given to you. Okay? So let's say now we have zero down on the problem, and the problem was could have been asking for every, anything over there. Okay? Let's say here we need this A. We want to find acceleration equal to 2, and that's the acceleration of the mass. How far or how fast is the mass moving? Okay. All right, folks? So we need to find A. Take a minute and plug in some stuff to find A. What is A? A is the derivative of V. Okay. So let's do the derivative. How you use the energy approach is you write down the energy equation after things have fallen on height h, and you take derivatives. So uh, derivative, pay attention, please. Derivative of h is what? M G V is equal to what now, okay. guys? What's the derivative of V squared? 2 V A. So 2 V A 2, this becomes M V. Pay attention. If you miss a step, you're going to ask me 10 minutes later, where did the 2 go? It's going to be a problem. I'll have to walk you back. I'll figure it out for you, but please pay attention. It makes it a lot easier that way. Right? Plus, what is the derivative of omega squared? And 2, not, not alpha. What's the derivative of omega squared? <laughs> Chain rule says what? 2 omega alpha plus i small times omega small alpha small. All right? Plus, again, the half goes because this becomes i large omega large alpha large. All right? Now, Guys, we have a couple of problems here. What the next step should be, typically in the energy approach, is to root out V. Cancel out V. How are you going to do that here? You have to plug in stuff. Okay? So next step, take three minutes. Three minutes to come up with the correct substitutions and find A on your own. Now, how many of you on the exam, if let's say this shows up on the exam, which it might, right? right? You know... Yeah. Uh, this is MGV equal to MVA plus I small. Well, how does omega small or V small relate to A? Right? Pay attention. Now, Omega small is what? Yeah. Plus I small. Omega small is V over R1. Because I said so. V over R1 times A over R1. All right? Claudio, shut up. All right. Um, look, it's right here, buddy. Right? Okay? 
we've been through that. Plus, I large. Now, this is the interesting part. How am I going to figure this out? Right? We need to relate this back to V. So it's going to be tricky, right? What do we know about... Okay, look at this. Omega large times R is equal to what? Call this V2 because we called it A2 here. Okay? Right? And that V2 is equal to what? Over on the other pulley. We need to make a transition to this guy. Right? V2 is equal what to on the other pulley? V2 is equal to omega small r2. Right? Okay? All right? So we can say that whatever, omega large. But we need to relate this to all to V. Okay? How does V relate to all that? V is equal to omega small R1. Okay? So, guys, what are you going to do now? Omega small, right, that guy is V over R1. So what is, happens here? Comes down here, omega large R is equal to omega small is V over R1 times R2. Yeah? By the same token, alpha large R is equal to what? A R2 over R1. We will need all that. 